five-time world martial arts champion, author of The Six Steps to the Fountain of Youth, certified personal trainer, sport nutritionist, and HeartMath Peak Performance Coach. You are about to enter into a whole new world of essentials in relaxation, improved focus, concentration, balance, muscle strength, and an overall sense of well-being and life balance. The Golden Warrior Fitness Program has five parts to it. The first part is the chair exercises. We have the chair exercise because some of the places where we teach, our people are physically at disadvantage in some sense, and it gives them the security of sitting down, even though a small part of our program is the chair And it consists of standing exercises, it consists of what we call six quick fix movements of Qigong, and also the dynamic fusion, which is one of the one of the best exercise programs I've ever seen for all fitness levels and ages. And then number five is the what we call the freestyle qigong, where those of you that want to upgrade your immune system, want to be able to relax if you're having a nervous bad day for whatever reason, the freestyle qigong is excellent. Okay. Now we'll begin with the first of the chair exercises. And we call this the bright morning. Every morning you wake up, sit on the edge of the bed and do a couple dozen of these. And it really is great for the lower back and getting the body going. So we're going to do actually 30 of these. Just follow me. and why this is such an important exercise to do. Most people, when they get past a certain age, everybody has lower back problems, or even middle back and upper back problems. What this does, it helps lubricate the spinal column, because all night long when we're sleeping, we're perspiring. In fact, our body is sort of dehydrated, if you want to call it that. And this really gets the body off to a good start. As you know, when you get up in the morning, a lot of times we have those aches and pains. This can eliminate a lot of that. Also, we've had students that come back and said that over a period of time, they don't have any more back problems. So I recommend doing this the first thing in the morning when you wake up, sit on the edge of the bed, and do 24 to 30 of these. All right, put out your right foot. First step is to circle it. Clockwise, the bigger the circle, the better. And of course, the object is to do this without moving your leg. Because in time, we tend to lose our connection from the motor nerves of the head down to the ankles and feet. Plus, our ankles become weakened with age. And what we're doing now is not only developing flexibility, but also ankle strength, which helps prevent falls. Then let's reverse. And even if you're a fine-tuned athlete, when you're watching TV or just sitting there doing nothing, this is a good exercise to do to keep ourselves in tune. And then push down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And if, if you have billup of water in the legs, we call this the pump. Sometimes by doing this exercise, everybody's different. It helps eliminate that challenge. And then what we want to do after that is go in, out, in, out, Go in as far as you can, out as far as you can, both sides. All right, then we use the next movement, the left foot, of course. Rotate clockwise. And again, the bigger the circle, the better. Now counterclockwise. All right, now push down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, in, and out. Now put up both feet, tighten up the tummy, get a little bit of tummy work out here, and work in those abs, and rotate both at the same time. One should be going clockwise, and one should be going counterclockwise. And again, the bigger the circle, the better. Now reverse. All right, now push down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, then in, out, in, out, keep that tummy tight, out, in, out. And then we put our feet flat on the floor, hands on the thighs, 
We're going to do five heel raises. On the fifth one, we're going to hold it for about five seconds. We'll do several sets, and then we will do ten heel raises and hold for ten seconds. Now, I want you to raise your heels as high as you can. In this case, no pain, no gain. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Hold it there. And again, one, two, three, four, and hold it there. And again, one, two, three, four, and hold it there. And now we're going to do ten and hold for ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now grab one of your knees like this and pull it up as far as you can. Let's see if you can touch your knee with your nose. If not, at least go in that direction. Or if you can pick your foot up off the floor, you're doing good compared to some people. All right, and of course, you, if you have a big nose, that's cheating. Let's try it again. All right, now let's do the other side. And don't feel bad if this is as far as you can. Each week, go a little bit further because the further we get, the younger we get. All right, now we're going to do a thing called the Chinese hand torture. I call it that because by the time you get to 30 seconds, you know you're going to know what I mean. This is this will help you open the pickle jar a little bit better. Here we go. 30 seconds, fast as hard as you can. Five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. And I'll shake them. Don't break them. Shake them up here. Shake them down here. Shake them over here. Now rub them together. Get some heat going. That heat is called chi, a form of chi, which means energy and breath in English. Then pull the fingers, crunch them back and forth like this. Very good if you got arthritis of the hands or any weakness of the fingers or hands. This is always good to strengthen the grip. Okay, now we're going to reach for the chi. The higher we reach, the stronger the chi. It's just like the best apples are the one where people haven't got to yet. And reach over here, reach for here. And of course, the good thing about the chi is free. No charge for the chi, which means energy. All right, that concludes our chair exercises. Thank you, and hope you enjoyed that half as much as I did. Okay, now we're ready to do our warm-up exercises. We do this before every class, whether it be the most advanced class or a brand new beginning class. It's important to warm up all the muscles, tendons, and ligaments in the body before we're doing our first movement of Qigong and Tai Chi. So the first one is put your feet shoulders width apart. All right, flex your knees, tuck in your tush, turn your waist, and let the arms come along for the ride. We call this Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy warm-up. It's one of the oldest recorded exercises. This comes back several thousand years in India. They did this one every single day. And relax the body. Think of the dog wags the tail. The tail doesn't wag the dog. Loose like a goose. Let the back of the hand, like I mentioned, hit the opposite side of the tush. All right, now put your feet double shoulder with flex your knees. And again, tuck in your tush. If you don't flex your knees, you're going to hate me tomorrow when you wake up with sore knees. So I don't want that to happen. So turn your waist and again let the arms come along for the ride. And make sure you let the head move with the body. Just relax. Just let your arms flap loosely. Just like I mentioned, the dog wags the tail. The tail doesn't wag the dog. All right, now put your feet shoulders width. Hands on the hips. And let's do the hula. We call this the hula hoop. This is great because what we're doing is we're getting rid of toxic buildup in the joints, in the, the cartilage, and it gets rid of that toxic buildup. And then the synovial fluid, which is the food for the cartilage, gets in there and not only lubricates the joint, but it also in reverse, it also is the food for the cartilage. So when you do not exercise and are sedentary, that cartilage deteriorates much faster, and that's where a lot of hip replacements come from. So it's a little simple movement can help possibly prevent a hip replacement. All right, arms out here, little tiny circles. You want little circles, not big, big circles, can irritate the rotor cuff. Little circles will massage the rotor cuff. And reverse. All right, palms up with little circles. 
and reverse with little circles. The women like this one because it firms up this area. All right, and the next one is my mother's favorite. She's up in heaven teaching all the angels to do this now. We call this the Bernice Special, named after her because she had arthritis of the hands and the shoulders. And when she would come to my Tai Chi classes, if I forget to do this warm up, she'd fuss at me all the way home in a nice way. So she's up there now teaching the angels how to do the Bernice Special. In fact, the Chinese doctors that practice Qigong have most of the patients doing this every day, at least a couple dozen times. If you ever feel lethargic, need a little extra octane in your tank, do a couple dozen of these, and it could wake you up. It creates a certain amount of bioelectricity in the body that, of course, is very healthy for the cells. And, of course, for the healthy cells, you have a healthy person. Not push out the wall, stretch that body. Don't cheat, I mean, I really push hard. Right now, push up the walls. This is a stick up, reach from the sky. All right. Now we have the vertebrae adjustment over here, over there, over here, over there. By the way, if there's something that is, what we're doing is something is too painful, just don't do it. There'll be enough that you can do without worrying about what you can't do. Okay, fold your fingers like this. Palms out, then gently each side, back and forth, and forth and back, and just relax. Make sure your knees are flexed. That is so important. All right, now above the head, side to side, gently, flow with it. You don't want to jerk it, you want it to be a smoothie. All right, now a little chubby checker twist. All right, now clasp the hands behind the back, pull those shoulders way back, turn your head both ways, just like this, just like a windshield wiper, back and forth and forth and back, then up and down. Side to side. All right, we're gonna do what we call a little dynamic tension now. In fact, this is great because what we're doing now, getting into the imagination. And uh, when I, Albert Einstein was on his deathbed, the reporters came and asked Professor Einstein, what is the strongest force in the universe? Is it E equals MC squared? And without any hesitation, they had their notes ready to take the, this down, this words of wisdom. Uh, he said, the strongest force in the universe is the imagination, the power of imagination. So what we're going to do in the next one, which is getting us ready to use that wonderful imagination we sort of lose along the way, uh, is called dynamic tension. And we're going to imagine as we do this, with every pull, we're going to get a little bit stronger. So inhale as we come up, make two fists. Turn them over and pull. Now imagine you're pulling several hundred. If you really want to get daring, several thousand pounds. And imagine you're getting stronger with every pull. Let's do that two more times. Make two fists, turn them over and pull. And on the last one, you might add a little bit of theatrics to it with a little bit of growl. All right, we do that in our class. We have a lot of fun with that one. All right, the next one is serving the tea. We call this winging it. We have two cups of tea here. We're serving it behind us without spilling it. This aligns the shoulder ligaments, and the tendon is very, very good for those areas, the upper part of the back and middle back. And we've got one more serving. Don't spill it now. In fact, I would recommend at home just practicing with a couple paper cups or, or plastic cups and hold them in your hand and see if you can go back there and do this without them falling because it really helps the alignment and it'll help you when you get to your Qigong and Tai Chi. Okay, after that one we have what we call the punching bag. We're going to do four counts slow, eight counts slow, then we're going to speed it up. So careful you don't hit yourself in the chin. This is designed to increase upper body strength. The boxers use this all the time. And also to be able to develop hand-eye coordination which we all could use a little occasionally. All right, here we go. Follow me. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and a two and a three and a four. Now we're going to do eight slow. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Now four comes fast. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now for you super fasters, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a good warm up. All right, hands on the knees. Rotate clockwise. Now counterclockwise. 
Make sure your feet are shoulders width apart. You never want to do this one with your feet together. It messes up the knees. All right, next thing we're going to do is call the suitcase trick. All right, put your feet double or triple shoulders width apart, toes pointed towards the corner. By the way, anytime you do a squat or bend down in Tai Chi or Qi Kong, make sure your toes are always pointed towards the corner so the knees go out over the toes. All right, this one here, I want you to use your imagination. We have a small suitcase way down here, medium-sized suitcase, or a large suitcase. The object is to pick up the two suitcases, all right, without bending forward. All right, so we go down, we'll pick up the large one, if you want, and exhale as we go up. Then the medium one, exhale as we go up, and if that is about as far as you want to go, without, if you've got too much pain, don't go any further. And then those of you that are flexible, go down and pick up the small one. And then those of you that can only go down a little bit, the best thing to do is do it with the technique, so you don't lean forward. And take each step at a time, each week go down a little bit further, because the further we go, in a way, the younger we get biologically in a sense. There's a lot of correlation between flexibility and our age, our biological age. Okay, the next one is called the Shim Shin Key. And that this, the key to this is to relax the upper body, being we sort of traumatize the lower body there. Remember, the legs are the pump to the heart. That's why picking up the suitcase is such an important part of our program. Okay, this is called Shim Shin Chi. This is Shim Shin Chi was developed by a Korean master named Jung Ri. Great exercise for loosening up the body, getting the attention in the neck. So follow me. Inhale as we come up through the nose. Turn the palm outward. Exhale as we go as far as we can comfortably. Inhale as we come back, exhale as we float down. And picture the arm with a healing balloon tied to the wrist, coming up effortlessly, turn the palm out, follow that hand, and as you come back, picture the hand floating down like leaves off of a tree. That sort of prepares you for what we do in Qigong. Okay, the next one is the vertebrae massage. Stick out your left thumb, grab it with your right fist. Put the fingertips over your right fist, take a deep breath in through the nose, we'll explain a little bit further on why that's so important. Then exhale as we go down, and this is very important, with the upper body first, one vertebrae at a time. And when you get down to as far as you can go comfortably, then push your fist towards the floor. Then as you come up, this is important, come up with the lower back, middle back, and upper back. Years ago they used to teach an exercise called touching your toes like this, and then they, a lot of the physiologists took it out because it put too much stress on the lower lumbar section. So when you bend over, starting with the upper body, like compressed, like an accordion, and going down that way and then coming up with the lower back first, middle back last, you're not putting that strain on the lumbar section. It's very healthy for the back. And most people have back problems, so anything we do to help the back, obviously, is well intended. Okay, the next one we're going to do is called the double cross. Now, if you feel like you're going to fall, just put your feet together. But those of you that feel like you will be able to stand up without falling, cross your left over your right, keep both legs straight, going down with the upper body first, one vertebrae at a time, just like we did with the vertebrae massage. Then come up with the lower back, middle back, and upper back. Then cross the right over the left. Same thing. Go down with the upper body, middle back, lower back, and then up with the lower, middle, and upper. Now, the next one is called wing. We named it winging it. Now, this one would be very careful. Only go as far as you feel comfortable. Put your feet as far apart as you feel comfortable. Then reach through the back of your hand as far as you feel comfortable. And then come up for air. Here we go. One more warm-up to do. We're ready to get into the really wonderful world of Qi Kong. It's called shooting the tiger with the bow. The purpose of this next one is to coordinate upper and lower body and really develop some good posture and good habits in your Tai Chi and Qi Kong. Okay, now we're going to start with our left foot and go towards the corner. Step towards the corner, pull the bow, come back together again, make sure your posture is up, tuck in your tush, arch your back, pull that bow, and one more time. Notice I'm Shooting like a gun here, that's an optional thing if you want to do that. You don't have to do that if you feel like you can. It's like rubbing your tummy and patting your head, but that's just the system that all the instructors do it just to sort of show off. Here we go, let's do it again. All right, now let's do the other side. I was kidding about it. 
Go to the right, pull the ball. You're back together again. Go to the right, pull the ball. Notice I'm tucking in my tush and arching my back. My head is looking straight and I'm shooting straight. All right, let's do that one more time. Pull the ball. Really stretch that body. And that concludes our warm-up exercises standing. Thank you. Welcome to the wonderful world of Tai Chi. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit of the history of Tai Chi. Quite interesting. Uh, the interesting thing about Tai Chi, it is like the brother-sister, you might call it, of Qigong. Qigong, as I mentioned earlier, started around 475 AD. Tai Chi did not get created until 1300 AD. So, for several centuries, the monks had these bandits stealing their food. They're very patient. And they had these strong bodies from the Qigong. But they couldn't do anything because they couldn't use weapons, because the feudalistic government put them in jail if they used weapons. They couldn't do anything that seemed defensive because they would be put in jail. So, as a result, there was a dilemma. As the, as the legend goes, one of the monks, uh, Chang Son Fin was traveling through the woods and saw a snake and a crane fighting and was amazed at the swiftness of the snake and how the snake was able to avoid the beak, the sharp beak of the crane. And he was amazed at how the crane was able to avoid the fangs of the snake by using the wings as a shield. So he got the idea of creating, they had these strong bodies, strong minds, of creating a series of exercises that could be used to be in defensive and protect them from the bandits. So he went back to the monastery and taught all the other monks this move. The bandits, sure enough, finally came. They never found them again. Now we know that doing Tai Chi doesn't help you live forever. We know it doesn't make you immoral. But we do know from research done by Tuff University, Harvard, that it can extend your life, and in, in not so much extend it, but improve the quality of life. And this USF just come out with research that it increases the size of the brain. Now, as we age, the brain shrinks, all the organs shrink. However, can you imagine the value of not only the organs not shrinking, but expanding inside, especially the brain, because then we can function better, and we can, we can actually think better, and actually feel better. So the Tai Chi is, if I was described in, in a sentence or two, it develops the softness and pliability of a child, where the Qi Kong develops the focus and concentration of a monk. So from the Qi Kong you gain the Qi, from the Tai Chi you gain what the, the Asians call Qing, all right, or Xin, excuse me, Xin, and then from Tai Chi and Xin combined is when you develop Qing, which is that real internal power. You've heard of where a mother picks up a car off of her son when the car falls on the son? That's Qing. And that, of course, we're not going around promising we can teach people to pick up cars, but if your life depended on something, you had to have that excessive energy, it's there. And Tai Chi has a remarkable way of mixed with Qigong developing that. So, we'll start right from the beginning of Tai Chi. In this case, we're going to start with our heels together, toes apart. We're in the Qi Kong, we started with our feet apart, shoulders width. Here we go, the heels together, and the toes about 10 to 20 degrees apart. The first move of Tai Chi, preparation. Let's lift our left heel, all right? Step to the side, this is called preparation left. And then bring your weight evenly. So let's do that again. Bring your feet together, heels together, toes apart. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to my right, so I'm, you're actually mirroring what I'm doing. Shift your weight to your right foot. Now step with your left foot shoulders width. All right, and then what we're gonna do next is called opening and closing. Inhale as we come up to your shoulder height. Think of a cobra ready to strike. Then bring it back till you feel a little resistance and then slowly let the hands come down. I want you to think of tying two healing boots tied to each wrist. The hands are raising up effortlessly. You bring them back to feel a little of tension and then slowly let them come down like leaves falling off of a tree. Think of like a cobra ready to strike, comes up, sees the danger, comes back ready to strike, the danger goes away so the cobra relaxes. That's opening and closing. The next movement we have is called squeezing the magic ball. Bring your hands up to about shoulder width, all right? And just 
come in like something trying to keep you from coming in and pull out like something's trying to keep you from pulling out. So squeeze, feel like there's a substance there, like you were doing this in water. Try to imagine that something's trying to keep you from bringing it together and something's trying to keep you from pulling it apart. After practicing this for a number of times, you will actually feel the energy and it gets quite intense over a period of time. This is a good thing. You can use that same energy to help heal your own body. Squeezing the magic ball. So these are all very simple movements, but very, very effective. All right, then drop your hands and relax. Now in Tai Chi, you don't want to focus on the breathing. You want to focus on the feeling, the movement. Because we do the breathing in the Qigong. In Tai Chi, you want to develop what the, the Chinese call the Shin, or the spirit, the feeling of the movement. Of course, I do want you to breathe. That's part of what you have to do, obviously, to stay alive. But don't focus on the breathing. Okay, the next movement is called lifting hands. And we have several foot positions. We have four foot positions in Tai Chi. This here is position number one. That's called parallel. In American, the Chinese call it Wu Qi or primordial unity, opposite before positive, the opposite before positive begin. All right, now in lifting hands, we go into what we call a T-stand. So everybody, for the sake of doing something with hands, just imagine you're hugging a tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the left T-stands, turning to the left, and your toe is off the ground, all your weights back on your left foot. All right, then face the front, now we're going to the left, all your weights on your right foot with your left toe facing the ceiling, the back facing the front. Let's do that again. Right T stands, face the front, left T stands, face the front. This is good exercise to develop flexibility and strength in the legs. Face the front, left T stands, Face the front, right T stands. Face the front, left T stands, and face the front and drop your hands. There you have the next position in Tai Chi. Now, lifting hands, we want to add a little bit of our hands to what we just did. Instead of hugging the tree, I want you to do this with your hands. Let's do it. Right T stands, bring your hands up like right this. And that's called lifting hands. Then drop your hands, and now we're going to do the same thing over here, and it's called play guitar. And they actually had an instrument called the lute, but we Americanized the instrument by calling it guitar. All right, so drop your hands. Let's do that again. Let's do lifting hands. Now the right hand should be shoulder high, the left hand should be pointed, the fingertips pointed back by the right elbow. And drop your hands and then we do the play guitar now your right fingertip should be pointed at your left elbow and your left hand should be shoulder high All right drop your hands let's do a couple of those lifting hands face the front play guitar face the front now if you want to really add a little pizzazz to it think of pulling a bow when we do this we come up shoulder high and then pull back with the left hand pulling and the right hand rising just slightly and face the front and do the same thing over here. Pull the right hand back and let the left hand rise a little bit and it gives you a whole different feeling. So follow me, let's do that together. Hands up, pull back, drop your hands, hands up, pull back, just a little bit. When you, if you notice everybody out there look at me, Notice we're coming up, both hands are level, and as you pull back, the one hand comes up, the other hand pulls back. Just a very subtle, but it gives you a whole different feeling. Okay, that's called lifting hands and play guitar. The next one is catching the ball, and that also is done from a T stance. Now I want you to imagine you got a ball here, the size of a beach ball. All right, we're holding that ball. Now I want you to turn the ball over so your right hand's on top, left hand's on the bottom. Now turn the ball back to where it was. Now turn the ball so your left hand's on top, right hand's on the bottom. Turn the ball again. Turn the ball again. Now bring the ball over to your left and go into a T stance. 
Okay, now face the front, turn the ball over, and go into a right T stance, holding the ball, right hand on top, left hand on the bottom. Face the front, turn to your left, hold the ball, left hand on top, right hand on the bottom. Face the front, and go into a T stance. Now your right hand's on top, left hand's on the bottom. Face the front, and let's do that a couple more times from a T stance. pick up your right foot, place it down. If you can't pick up your right foot, you're, you're too spread apart or you got your weight on the wrong foot. All right, now let's face the front. Let's go into catch the ball over here, left hand on top, right hand on the bottom. Now everybody pick up your left foot, place it down. If you can do that, then you're in good shape. All right, face the front. That's what we call catching the ball. Okay, the next one is bouncing the ball. Bouncing the, this ball's magic. Now I want you to do it with me. I'll tell you why it's magic, all right? Now we're going to bounce it over here like this to our left, pick up your right toe off the ground just slightly, drop it and bounce it over here to your right, pick up the left toe and let it down gracefully, up, down, bouncing the magic ball over here, bouncing the magic ball over there, bouncing it to your right, bouncing it to the left. We're doing this from parallel position. All right, the reason it's magic is you can't see it. But if you're thinking about it, basically that ball's there. All right, let's do that one more time. Bounce it to the right. Pick up the foot off the ground gradually. Bounce it to the left. Now, the Tibetan monks did this one. They did it every day, and it helped their balance. The next movement is rotating the golden ball. All right, now we're going to do this from what we call a bow stance. Bow stance is the third stance in Tai Chi. And the bow stance is one of the harder stances, but one of the most effective stances because of, of the benefit of strengthening the legs and developing flexibility. So to do a bow stance, I'm gonna turn my back to you, make it a little bit easier. Okay, let's start with our feet, shoulders width apart. We turn the right foot to get started on a 45 degree angle. Now what I want you to imagine that there's rocks, there's water, and we're gonna be stepping on the rocks. And the rocks are shoulders width apart and, and the length of our foot as far as our, our stride. Then after we turn the right foot 45 degrees, bend your left foot to what we call center point. That's for balance purposes. Then we do a half moon circle with the left foot hitting the rock, and then shift in our weight so we don't slip off the rock. And then your left knee should come out over your left toe. 70% of your weight should be on the left foot. So let's imagine we're holding the ball so we can do this as an exercise. All right, then shift your weight back to the right foot. Slide this left foot back so you're still shoulder width apart. Now we're gonna do a right bow stand. Shift your weight to the right foot. Bring your left foot to center point. Now we're going to step on a rock to the right, do a half moon circle, touching the rock so we end up shoulder width apart. Then shift your weight so the right knee comes out over the right toe. Then shift your weight back to the left foot. Slide this right foot back so your shoulders width and that ends that exercise. That is the left and right bow stance. All right, let's do that again. Shift your weight to the left foot, turn the right foot 45 degrees. Shift your weight to the right foot, bring your left foot to center point for balance. And we do a half moon circle, hitting a rock so we're shoulder width apart. Shift your weight. All right, and then when we want to bring this left foot back, we shift our weight to the right foot, slide this foot back so we're still shoulder width apart. Now let's do a couple of them as we advance forward. All right, that is what we call the bow stance. Now, to make a movement out of that, catching the magic ball, we obviously not only use the feet, but we use the hand. So we're going to start all over again from here. I want you to have your hands at your side just like this. All right, turn the right foot 45 degrees. Shift your weight to the right foot, bring your left foot to center point. Half moon circle. Reach out like you're grabbing the ball, about the side of a basketball. Then bring the ball back as your weight shifts to the back foot. Drop it down to the waist. 
Come forward, keep both feet flat. Think of your body like water. If you pour water in a base, it takes the shape of the base. Think of the feeling, the movement, and the music as you do this movement. You come down your waist, it's like a 360 degree circle. Come up to your shoulders, back as far as you can go, down your waist, and forward. This is a wonderful exercise to strengthen the legs and also relax the body. It's very relaxing and developing flexibility. Then we drop our hands, that was the left post stance. And we did rotate and roll the ball from that left post stance. And slide this left foot back so we're shoulder width. Now we're gonna do a right post stance. Bring right foot to center point for balance. Half moon circle. Shift your weight, hold the ball. Now let's rotate the ball. Come up to the shoulders. Down to the waist, like I mentioned, a 360 degree circle. Then drop your hand, slide this foot back. Now once you get that down and can comfortably step without shoulders without thinking, then you can sort of shorten the movement by turning your right foot 45 degrees, bring your left foot to the center point. And rather than doing a half moon circle, you can step right out there, straight to the destination. Shoulders with at about a full length strike without moving the body. In other words, when you step, you don't want to move the body with the step. The foot always needs to go out there first, then the weight second. So once we get where you're comfortable and you've done the half moon circle like that, then you move right straight to the left foot stance while I'm doing the half moon circle. All right. Thank you very much. Is the short program of Qigong. These are done in certain sequence. Now, the reason that this is important to keep it in these sequence, we don't really know why exactly, but we know that they had hundreds and thousands of hours to figure all this out. So by doing the exercise we're going to do called a short program of Qigong, each one has a specific purpose. And when they interlink with the other one that comes afterwards, it acts like there's a, a synergism there of more internal and external energy. Okay, put your feet shoulders with and, and keep your fingers apart just like you're picking up a basketball when you do Qigong. And remember to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Think of your hands like claws. That shouldn't be too hard. Just like everybody do this. All right. Now the first movement is called the beginning. And start with our hands down here. We inhale as we come up. Come up to the top of our head. And then slowly exhale. Make sure you come down slower than you went up. And think of your hands like claws. Inhale as we come up. When we're teaching children's classes, we teach them, think of yourself being a big, powerful grizzly bear or a lion marking a spot on the tree with the fingers just tearing off the bark, being so powerful and strong. And even as adults, it wouldn't hurt to think that a little bit here and there. Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we come down. I recommend doing, when you're doing this as a unit, do at least six repetitions of each of the movement and do six sets. That takes about 15 minutes. All right, the next one is called flying goose. We inhale as we come up. Our arms are like big, beautiful wings and slowly exhale as we come down. Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we come down. Feeling totally relaxed, at ease, free from disease. And we'd be, you'd be surprised, and I can say we would be surprised, as how strong you can, or how much you can improve your strength simply by doing repetitions of these movements because the arms are a lot heavier than you think they are. And it, it's really good at developing mus muscle endurance rather than just muscle strength because we're getting a lot of oxygen into the body, a lot of good things happen when nitric oxide and oxygens are displaced through the whole body. Good. Next one is called looking at the moon. It's not just a, it's not just an ordinary moon. This is a beautiful moon. Use that imagination. Imagine we're looking at the most beautiful moon we've ever seen. Let's go up to our right. Let the left heel come off the ground as you inhale. Slowly exhale. Then go up to your left. Let the right heel come off the ground. Slowly exhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Make sure right here all the carbon dioxide has left your body. You might even want to give it a little puff to make sure to make sure it's all gone so we can fill up with wonderful nitric oxide and oxygen. 
Smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the candles. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. <clears throat> imagination or gives you a good opportunity to use imagination in a very productive way. You bring the arms back, you can't bring them back any further. Remember too, all these movements are designed also to heal the body physically, not just the emotions and the, and the spirit. So we inhale as we come up, grab a hold, imagine you grab a hold of a star, the energy from a star, and slowly exhale as we bring that wonderful energy from the hands and release it into the solar plexus. And let's do that a couple more times. Inhale. Reach up and slowly exhale, coming down, feeling good, reaching up, grabbing a hold, feel it in the hands, bring that energy into the solar plexus. The Chinese call it the Dante Yin area, that is the seat of all of our strength, our power, and has a lot to do with our total overall health. All right, good. The next one is called opening the chest. We sometimes call this cleaning the radiator. This is one of my favorites, because this one has such a multitude of benefits. This particular movement that we're gonna do next, it is psychologically, physiologically, and physiologically, psychologically, and philosophically impossible to stay angry or to feel depressed when you do this next move. So if you ever feel depressed or anxious, this move is carbon for you to be able to copy it and feel much better. Follow me. Inhale as we come up. All right, turn the palms so you can see them with the thumbs up. Open up, give me a nice big smile. Try to be depressed right here. You can't. It's physiologically impossible. And slowly exhale to so get shoulder width apart. Plus it also removes a lot of toxins in the upper body. Make what makes it harder for women to get breast cancer because a lot of breast cancer comes from build up of toxins in the upper body. And when you do this, this move, you can really help yourself by right at this point, picking a time in your life that was very special. Remembering a time in your life when you go way back in your teenage years or the warm fuzzy feeling you get when you look at a picture of a loved one. And just try to anchor that. To this. Psychologists call it a cue or an anchor. And then slowly exhale. Now after doing that a couple times, you don't even have to think about it. Because when you think good thoughts, when you do an anchor or you're creating certain hormones go in the body, and these are all healthy hormones. And then when you go back in time to a time that you were young, and if you can anchor that right in here, then you're releasing certain hormones that you did then that you don't release anymore. And these hormones are very healthy. So we inhale, open up, give me a smile if you can, and slowly exhale to get shoulders width apart, turning the hands coming down. Remember the exhale takes a little bit longer than the inhale. Smell the flowers, open up, slowly blow out the candles. All right, good. Number six is settling the chi. This is so great because this is sort of a climatic experience to all the moves we just did. And if there's any stress left over or any anxiety left over, this is the one where you push it a thousand feet into the ground. So simple, but yet so impactful. <clears throat> Follow me. Inhale as we come up over the head. Now point the fingers towards each other. We call that a bridge. Then slowly exhale as you feel the head relax. The face, the neck, the shoulders, the chest, the stomach, the solar plexus, all the way to the toes. Let's do that again. Inhale through the nose. Very slowly exhale through the mouth. Feeling every single part of the body relaxing, at ease, free from disease, and every cell with a happy, smiley face. Think of the cells that be little miniature humans. All 150 trillion of them are real happy right now. And relax. And then our gentle bow. Now, how do you keep those cells happy? Throughout the day, I want you to take a little bit of time and do what we call the simple breathing technique of longevity. What you do in the morning, you take 10 deep breaths when you wake up, before you do anything. Take 10 deep breaths, sit on the edge of the bed or in a comfortable chair, 
Inhale through the nose, to the count of five. Exhale through the mouth, to the count of seven. Do that 10 times. Then do it in the afternoon between one and four. Do it the night before you go to bed. And that way you keep these good hormones going in the body, you keep the stress lower, and it's like taking this class with you wherever you go. All right? So all of you just try that at least for a week or so, and believe me, you'll thank me for it because it will, you'll notice an improvement of energy and the way the body functions and so on. So thank you, God bless you. All right, now we're ready for the exciting exercise called Qi Kong. Qi Kong goes back centuries ago and kept secret, passed on through the families. And just recently, within the last 20, 30 years, Qi Kong has drifted into this country. I've been fortunate enough to have instructors that shared these secrets with me many years ago, before anybody in the area had these techniques in Qi Kong. And what I did over the period of the years, because there's over 2,000 styles of Qi Kong in China alone, I cherry-picked some of the best movements for different situations. And beside our regular Qi Kong and Tai Chi curriculum, we have what we call our six quick fixes. The object of this is to say, for example, you really feel stressed out and you really need to go do something very important. You don't have time to go through the whole warm-up routine where you can do what I call the quick fixes. So the first one we do is called five-element warm-up. This one is to reduce stress. Then we have a movement called bring the lotus to the temple. Beautiful movement using the knowledge of the sacred flower, the lotus, which the, the practitioners of Qigong believe that this flower has healing potential to it. Well, whether it does or not, we know one thing, that the power of the imagination does. The disease cannot live in a body that's in a healthy emotional state. Many will share that with me. So with that one, we're going to really develop the chi energy, get the energy flowing through the meridians quickly to ignite those cells like a blowtorch rather than a match. And then the next one is called centering for focus, control. If you watch the Olympics just recently, the, the uh, athletes that won the gold were the ones that were the most focused. So we have a movement and it's called the, uh, it's called focusing, centering. And this movement is really, really exciting when it comes to being able to develop the ability to focus, concentrate, and not allow all the garbage that's out there to interfere with our thinking. Then the next one that we have is called the press. And the press is excellent for developing upper body strength, for getting rid of tension in the shoulders, for also being able to get rid of any migraine headaches you might have. We've been very successful using the press with that element. It doesn't usually help with sinus headaches, but it does in most cases with migraine headaches. So you've got a combination of each of these movements has specific benefits, but they all overlap. All of them reduce stress, all of them increase your strength and health and well-being. Then the number five is called the waves. The, the, learn to control your body. Learn to control it so that when you learn to control the body, you learn to control the mind. It's very difficult to control the mind or the body trying to start with controlling the mind. So this next, the wave, the number five, is really exciting when it comes to being able to follow a beautiful pattern, a rhythm pattern. And then number six is called the moving the chi, or yin and yang. This one is to, I call it an internal massage. To be able to get inside the body and actually like reaching in and each internal organ massaging and keeping that organ from shrinking and keeping it in good health. Just recently, there was research done by USF that Tai Chi helps increase the size of the brain. As we age, it shrinks. Well, not only now do we know that we can keep it from shrinking, but we can increase the brain size just by doing Tai Chi. And we suspect that Qi Kong has some of those same benefits. All right, so we're going to start off with the five element warm up. Okay, the first quick fix is called the five element warm up of Qi Kong. By the way, Qi Kong means cultivating energy. And this movement is designed to really reduce stress on nothing and raise the immune system. And, and it's the combination of the music, the breathing, and the movement that accomplish that. So follow me for the five element warm up. One of the most important things is to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. There are three reasons. Before we get started, I want to share this with you. Number one reason, it filters the air. Number two reason, it releases a gas called nitric oxide, produced by the upper phalanges of the nose, and that's nature's greatest anti-aging gas. And it dilates all the vessels. So people that have nitric oxide in their body, even though it's a short-lived gas, experience a, a positive rush, increase of strength and awareness, especially mental clarity. 
So that's why when people do Qigong and practice it, and then throughout the day, occasionally do some deep breathing to sort of ignite the memory of that Qigong you did that day, then you're really in a very healthy situation mentally, physically, and emotionally. So the first one here we're going to do, remember to keep uh, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, and the third reason it's important to exhale through the nose so you won't swallow a bug. All right, now follow me and keep your fingers apart just like you're picking up a basketball. Think of the fingers like claws. Right, here we go. Follow me. Smell the flowers. Very slowly blow out the candles. The exhale should take a little bit longer than the inhale. Coming down to the waist, turn the hands over as we inhale. Smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the candles. Inhale through the nose as we bring it to the temple. Exhale. into your hands and down slowly as we exhale right into your solar plexus. Let's do that one more time. Smell the flowers. Very slowly. Here we get a chance to really use the power of imagination. Now the Asians, in a certain group of Asians, believe that this flower has some healing potential, power to it. Well, whether it does or not, the main thing is when, with this exercise, you're going to be able to use imagination. I believe it's imagination, not so much the flower. So let's use our imagination to take our fitness level to another level, to get the chi moving through the meridians and through the body quickly and effectively with a lot harder spark. All right, put your feet a little bit more than shoulder width, almost pointed towards the corner. Now the lotus, the sacred lotus flower, grows on top of the water. And the interesting thing, the petals never get wet. The water just rolls right off. And the stem goes right down into the ugly mud. So the philosophical thing about that, you know, for every ugliness, there is some beauty. And isn't it funny how this beautiful flower, one of the most beautiful flowers on earth, gets its nourishment from the ugly mud. So a lot that can be learned from nature. All right, follow me and remember to keep your fingers apart and breathe through the nose, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Here we go, inhale and you don't have to go down too far. Just do a little squat as you pick it up. Remember, it grows on top of the water. Continue inhaling as we come up. Exhale as we let it out, touching the two pinky fingers. That's important, one hand is positive, one hand is negative. That creates a circuit of energy. Inhale as we open up, focus on the palms. Exhale, we push up. Now you want to push real tight and stretch the body, and you curl your thumbs so that you really get a tight push. Then we want to relax as we form the arch. Inhale, then exhale as we go down and pick up the beautiful lotus again. Inhaling, all the way up. Up on the toes is optional, and then slowly exhale, picturing every single cell. Being a little miniature human with happy, smiling faces. We attack disease and fitness from a cellular level rather than just a regular mind-body level. Okay, let's do that again. Inhale as we go down, pick up the beautiful lotus. Continue inhaling. Exhale as we let it out, touching the two pinky fingers. Inhale as we open up. Exhale as we push up, tighten up the thumbs. Inhale. 
fails to reform the arts. Exhale, we could not pick it up the beautiful notes again. Inhale, inhale, overhead, now picture every single cell having a happy, smiling face. Happy because what you're doing makes them feel good. And happy cells are a happy person. All right, in our traditional bow. Okay, the next one is centering. And this one, the important part of this one here is try not to have from here to here have any internal dialogue. It takes a lot of practice. It's that space between thought called the now. And that's the part where true genius and creativity comes from. Very few people can do that. So it takes a lot of practice. Also, um, keep the hand in your peripheral vision all the way down, even though you're looking straight forward. When we come up with the hand and come down, keep it in your peripheral vision. This one is really designed to develop focus and attention. The power of attention is the tool that the warrior uses to overcome obstacles. With attention, you develop concentration. With concentration, develop spiritual power. And spiritual power is the mightiest force in existence. So this is a good step in that direction. Follow me. Very simple exercise, but very, very powerful. And like I said, try not to have any internal dialogue. It takes sometimes months of practice to do that. But believe me, it's worth it. Okay, here we go. Ready? Inhale through the nose. Slowly exhale through the mouth. Try to exhale really slow. Try to keep that hand in your peripheral vision. And also, cease to have any internal dialogue. Practice that. Now the other hand. Inhale. Slowly exhale. Smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the candles. One candle at a time. should be starting to feel the effects of this positively. Now, if not, we still got a couple more to go, so don't worry. Okay, the next one is called the press. This is good for developing upper body strength, flexibility in the shoulders. Also, this is the one that gets rid, in most cases, of migraine headaches and has a lot of other benefits, but we'll just stick with those for now. It starts off folding the hands like this, palm facing up. Inhale as we come up. Then we get equal to our shoulders, in other words, our shoulders up past the shoulder, uh, chest, I meant to say, and then turn the palms over, go down as far as you can, and hold it there for 10 seconds. Now your eyes should be fixated on where the ceiling meets the wall, and you hold this for 10 seconds, and as you hold it, you exhale if you can for the full 10 seconds. Try to exhale slowly, if not, just hold your breath, and then we'll inhale on the way up, and then again, slowly exhale on the way down, feeling totally relaxed, at ease, free from disease. Let's do that again. Inhale as we come up, top of the chest, and turn the palms over. Exhale as we go down, as far as you can handle. And hold that as we exhale slowly, slowly, slowly. And keep your eyes fixated on where the ceiling meets the wall. Let's do a couple more. Smell the flower. Slowly blow out the candles. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Hold it there. This one sort of grows. And believe me, the more you do it, the more you enjoy it. All right, the next one is called the wave. This is the one where we develop good body rhythm because learn to control the body is much easier to control the mind. And we eat with rhythm, we talk with rhythm, we sleep with the rhythm. So when we move with the rhythm, it has a very, very profound effect on a period of time on the body positive. So follow me and start with your left hand if you're facing me. Inhale. Slowly exhale. Follow that hand in your peripheral vision also. Inhale. On the way down, exhale. Keep your head straight forward. Try to keep that hand in your peripheral vision as we exhale all the way down. Now the other hand, smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the candles. Inhale through the nose. 
exhale to the bones. One more each hand. And come to the front of the head. part of the secret to me achieving five world titles fighting in full contact point karate as the oldest man in the world to accomplish that. And it's called dynamic fusion. This is century old and again kept secret for many, many centuries and was one of the most important exercises created by the Tibetan monks of all the Qigong exercises, developing good lean body, using body fat as the fuel rather than accomplishing additional body fat through inactivity and through exercises that actually burn and use up the protein in our body, the muscle mass in our body, such as long distance jogging and exercises like that. So I can really relate to this exercise because of all the individuals in my classes that have experienced and practiced dynamic fusion, this has been, of all the exercises, been the most dramatic. People improving their golf game, athletes going to a higher level, and the funny part of it is, it can be done, some of it can be done, and actually all of it can be done seated. You get a little bit more benefit standing, but if you're physically challenged, or if you maybe are recovering from an injury, this is an excellent exercise to keep the metabolism high, develop lean muscle, and also internally, I call it the internal medicine for the body. And, it's, and I named it Dynamic Fusion because basically it didn't have a name. And part of the reason was it was kept secret for many centuries, like I mentioned. And I was very fortunate enough to come and, and be introduced to this over 20 years ago. All right, first thing to realize is that our hands are the secret gateway to good health. Our hands are the gateway to a healthier heart. Now, there are 12 movements that we're going to do in the dynamic fusion. And I recommend doing six 
And then once you develop the ability to go from six repetitions to 12 repetitions to 25 repetitions, once you hit 25 repetitions of each of these movements, then go to the add on the additional six. So you have a total of 12. In fact, one of the reasons this come out of the closet basically is it was thought that the Chinese military is using these exercises. And I would suspect that some of the gymnasts have been using dynamic fusion. Because you can usually spot them. They have a leaner than normal body and they have much more than normal strength and flexibility. All right. The first thing that we want to do is realize I want to take you through each of the movements so you can familiarize yourself. Movement number one is our palms facing the floor. It's very simple. What we're going to do is we relax as we inhale. As we exhale, we push down. Now, you don't have to travel too far, and when you push, you want to push with some force, but not so much force that you're shaking. And you, what you want to do is, is focus your attention on the hands, the wrist and the hands, so that your attention is in that area, because where the mind goes, blood goes. Where blood goes, oxygen goes. Where oxygen goes, nitric oxide, and then, of course, chi follows that. So that's number one. Number two is we fold the hand, the fingers, and leave the thumb sticking out. That's on the inhale. On the exhale, we turn the thumbs backwards so we can't turn them any further, and you'll know by feeling in your tricep area. Then number three, we open the hands at our side palms facing the thighs. And what we're going to do on the rest of the exercise, all exception to one, is we're going to fold the fingers on the exhale, then the knuckles go into the palm, and then the thumbs go, we're making a fist in other words. So it starts up by folding the fingers, rolling into the palm, and then the, nut, the thumbs go over last. So that we do through most of the movements, and that, that's done on the exhale. Well, let's go through it now together. I'm just going to do three repetitions of each. Now here's what I recommend before you get started. It is to do six repetitions of each of these six movements, and then increase it each week by six to where you get to 25. Once you hit 25, then add the other six routine to it. Because I guarantee you, if you, when you get to 25, doing 12 of these repetitions, and do it a couple times a week. You don't have to do it every day. Do it, say, at least three times a week. This is not to replace your normal Qigong and Tai Chi. This is to do an addition to that. All right, follow me. Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we push down. Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we push down. And number two, inhale as we fold the fingers, exhale as we turn the thumbs back, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. The number three, open the hands, inhale, exhale, make a fist, inhale, exhale. When you make the fist, don't squeeze so hard you shake, just imagine you're squeezing harder than you are. Put your imagination there in the fist. That's number three. Number four is inhale, arms out. Exhale as we make a fist. Inhale as we open up. Exhale as we make a fist. Inhale as we open up. Exhale as we make a fist. And this is number five. Here we go. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Number six. Back by the ears, palms facing outward, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale.
To find out more information on the certification Tai Chi Qi Gong program, go to the website you see on the screen or call the number and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.